My name is Jason Tiedek and I help people give amazing presentations. And today I'm going to show you how to give a presentation and manage any audience with grace. Here's what I'm going to do with you today. Take a look up here. You're going to learn from me 7 times 3 times 5, which is 2105 things that you've never heard before, and I know because I wrote them all from scratch, to make your presentations drop dead amazing. There's four criteria for a good leading question. <clears throat> and you should know that the leading question, in my opinion, is the most powerful question if you want people to actually understand what in the world your presentation is talking about. Now here they go, ready? What I love about this, I just have to say, what I love about this boot camp is I teach all these techniques in various other places. Not all of them, you're gonna get a number of things I've never taught anywhere else. But this is the one place where I get to dive in in ways that you people finally go, Oh, wow, that's so easy and I see the whole thing and we're diving into everything today. We're not skimming over anything. Did I choose to do this one right here? I give you this directional. And by the way, you all did it. Even for people on the video probably did it. Why is it powerful? Because who gets paid when I say one of these? You do. What's even more powerful is if you look up here, I'm going to just read to you how the presenters did these and you tell me why they're not working. You ready? If you wouldn't mind, look up here. If you take a look at your screen, I want you to read the second paragraph on page three. Why are these not as good as, look at your screen. Think about that. Write that down. Why aren't they as good? Listen to the tone and tell me why. They're not as direct. They're not as direct. Write that down, that's a good one. It needs to be direct. They're not as direct. It's not till you get to the empathy level that they feel like they're on the same team with you. Well, here's the deal. If you don't get your audience to the feelings and or empathy level, you can't get them to genuinely laugh with you. Because remember, people don't laugh because they think something's funny, ha ha, unless they first feel what? Good and safe. But this gets a teamwork. I'm actually telling you that this four step method, which by the, take, by the way, the whole thing takes only 30 to 60 seconds, is going to get them to teamwork in 30 seconds. Oh my goodness, what this means is I'm giving you a method, a recipe to get them to empathy so they feel safe so that immediately now I can go make them feel good and make them laugh with me. Test out all your material ahead of time with every possible generation that will be in your room. And I don't care if it's a generation in 2300 that you have in 300 years, you're still going to have to do this. What do I mean by this? Still in number one, you can write this in the margin if you want. You gotta test out your jokes. You gotta test out your trivia. You gotta test out all the things I taught you in the last chapter. Your talent performances, your, your impersonations, all the things, the stories, all those things I taught you, you have to go test them out on whoever might be in your room. Because there's two issues with with any of these people. You could do one of two things with them. You could either offend them or you could sadden them. This is what you cannot do. You can't offend, you can't sadden. That's all I'm testing for, by the way, to Taylor, is if I'm gonna offend or sadden. Don't try, underline this, don't try to incorporate humor or enthusiasm right away. People won't respond to it, humor or enthusiasm, until they're feeling what? Good. Then on page 55, next page, underline this with me or give it a big circle. Gradually, by the end of the opener, after you've shown them the list of takeaways, check it out, this is my list of takeaways, after I've shown them this, and especially after you've taught them, how, underline this, how to achieve the first takeaway, then 
you're ready to show some enthusiasm, build on it, and perhaps share some humor. Oh, I can tell you right now what I'm teaching in this chapter is a game changer for most people and completely rocks most people's worlds. They never knew. It's so subtle and so powerful and they never knew it. Well, the way you get rid of your fillers is you replace them with a half second pause. And eventually you'll be able to replace them with nothing. And that's when you can decrease your time. Watch this. So, the most important thing to think about is um, retreats. Let me replace it. The most important thing to think about is retreats. See that? If I did that for 60 straight minutes, would I look more credible? Would I be able to get done faster? One way to speed up my presentation is what? Talk faster. And what's the good pace to talk at if I want to talk faster? Between what and what? 180 and 200. Good. What's the second way I can do it? Instead of talking faster, what else could I do? I could cut out all my fillers or most of them. And what's the third thing I can do? Avoid the repetition, the redundancies, the fluff. If you do those three things, you will be able to get done sooner. Powerful, isn't it? Plus, not only are you going to get done sooner, are you going to be more engaging? Less fillers is more engaging. Talking faster every once in a while is more engaging. And not and saying less with more, or more with less, is more engaging. Powerful. Encourage in-scope questions to slow down pace. Get them to ask you more questions if you realize you're going too fast. Encourage them to ask them. And what did I say is the best way to get them to ask questions? Is it, do you have any questions bottom of 69? Or is it, what questions do you have about X? Which one was more apt to get a question? What questions do you have about X? This recipe is magnificent. And I didn't create it by myself. I created it by watching presenter after presenter after presenter and realizing that all of these, especially young presenters, but including everyone that's afraid or fearful, are worried about answering questions because they're worried about looking foolish in front of everyone not knowing the what? The answer. Or people who've been really doing it for a while say, Jason, I get all these questions and I can answer them, but then I never finish on time. Either way, this is killing a lot of these young people because they don't know how to answer questions in a way that makes them look confident and has everyone feel like their needs are being met. If you do this right, it can change everything for your presentations. What questions do you have about this room? Why did they pick this wallpaper? Ah, so you're wondering why they chose this specific wallpaper as a decoration for this room. Is that right? Yes. Tell you what, go ahead and write that down and I'll answer that for you and anyone who would like to join us at 4.30 today. Let's talk about that then. Thanks for asking that. What other questions do you have about this room? Did it sound a whole lot different than the in-scopes that I didn't know the answer for? It's very similar, isn't it? The only difference is I didn't say I have a few thoughts on that. I just simply told you immediately, write it down. Now, some of you are thinking, gosh, it sure seems harsh and rude. I mean, you didn't even prep us for that, Jason. Well, I kind of did. I just haven't told you I prepped you. It's called a question boundary. Did you catch that question boundary when I read it to you? It's cool. If you, if you just trust me that this stuff is gold and you just use this, you're going to crush it like Marissa did. You're going to have a great experience on this if you try it. So here we go. Turn to the person next to you. Just try my language. You don't have to write it down. Just ask each other a question. Try my language. Read it to each other and then switch. Jason, I don't really need to stop interruptions. I don't really need to handle negativity and I don't really need to manage an attention because it doesn't really happen to me all that often. Well, here's my response to you. It will. Make no mistake about it. There will come a time. It might be few and it might be far between, but there will come a time where you have some negative people in your audience or you have some people that are interrupting you constantly or even a little bit 
and you have some people who are just not listening to you and it's going to cause you some pain. And I'm going to teach you today how to solve that pain all but completely. Which one's more powerful, the what or the why? Remember what the Harvard study said? The why. That's why it comes last. Because I want them to remember it more. At the beginning of my presentation, which one did I say first? The why. Because it's more powerful, I want to say it right away. But at the end of my presentation, which one did I say last? The why. But at the end of your presentation, you can write this in the margin also, you want to say, you want to do these, these, all these things, but the very last set of things you do right here is the why. The what comes before this. Because look at this. I want them, when I first start, I want them to see the why immediately, so like, boom, they're in. And at the end, I want them to hear the why at the end, so they leave with that why and think how great it was. Powerful. The why always is at the bookends of your presentation. Start it with the why, end it with the why. And I want you to write something with me where it says, offer a sincere thank you. Write down, don't thank them for their time. Because it implies that they could have spent their time better elsewhere. Instead, look what it says. First par or last paragraph, 113. Give an actual, specific reason to thank them and you will seem even more sincere. For example, I might say at the bottom of page 113 with a large audience, thank you for being such a warm audience. Or I might say in the validation session, John, thank you for your feedback. You just learned 105 new techniques to manage your audience with grace. And that, if you look on page 12, is going to help you Handle your timetable, respond to every question, diffuse distractions, and end on a high note so they actually applaud what you have to say. Mm -hmm.